Hello, Strategists. For today's video, for involving Dwarf Fortress, in particular Fortress Mode, I'm going to address the lighting system. There are a lot of people who are new to the game that if, if they don't understand the lighting system, and if you understand the lighting system, you'll be able to make your base 10 times safer. Or some other multitude of numbers that I clearly just made up. But it is required for you to understand the sliding system and how you can be safe. The game has three states of being when you look at any one item. If you see in the lower right corner, it is outside, light, and above ground. The outside, light, and above ground in fortress mode are actually only two different things which yield three results due to the intricacies of fortress mode. In fortress mode, light and above ground will always match each other, no matter what you do. In adventure mode, they can be different, but in fortress mode, they're always the same. So really what you have is inside, outside, or above ground, below ground. And below ground is always going to be inside. So really you have three states. You have above ground and outside, above ground and inside, or below ground and defaulting to inside. And this is critical for three different things that can really wreck your base. First thing, food production. Second thing, cave adaption. And third thing, miasma. Miasma is that purple gas that forms from rotting bodies, gives your dwarves negative thoughts, and can lead to your base falling apart. Food production is important because you need to be able to generate food, particularly from farms, if you want to be able to generate booze. And booze is really the crux of what you're needing it for anyways. And lastly, cave adaption. It doesn't solve it so much as soon as you understand it, as it makes it take longer for you to be in a bad position. So what I have done here is literally nothing. Uh, I, it's, it's, it's start from scratch. I didn't do anything fancy. I just mined out some stone and grabbed it to do this little example here. I dug down a two by seven hole, covered six of it with stone, stone tile. And below that dug a rather large hole heading to the west. And I filled this with three farms. Now, the reason why I've done this is this is kind of the default farm type design that I do in any of my uh, fortresses. You are not required to build them like this, but this is the easiest way to show you the three different things you could probably be doing. To point out though, for what I said earlier, the way the game calculates above ground and therefore light is as soon as anything is exposed to the sky at all, it is in fact light and above ground. So uh, what I've done is I have, like I said, I dug it all out and I covered most of it up with a hole, I, including the top, but not the bottom of this. And that's because I wanted to do this one live so you can make sure that I'm not lying to you for this next bit. It is covered. He has dug the hole. Th th this was done live. If we look at what it is downstairs, it is still light and above ground. It does not need to at one point be exposed to the wide open expanse of the air so much as the square above it needs to be light and above ground. It updates lighting systems. It updates lighting systems, the square above to the square below, but it does not go laterally. This light did not go left from the hole I dug. It cannot spread ever. It is only a direct top to bottom, but once one of them has been, you can therefore dig under completely safely. So just by digging that hole and then covering it up again, anything I do below that particular grid is now light and above ground. If it is above ground, one, you do not develop cave adaption. It doesn't happen. You don't regress cave adaption unless you are outside, like outside, outside, but you do not develop cave adaption. So that's good. Number two, for farms, anything that is above ground does local biome produce. It does not do normal dwarven produce. A lot of dwarven produce is really useful for growing underground, but it tends to have seasonality restrictions, i.e. some plant mainly grow in summer and fall, but not spring and winter. Whereas a lot of plants can duplicate the effects of dwarven plants, but they have to be above ground. The game doesn't check to see if they're inside so it still works. And the third thing is 
miasma. Wherever you're going to like need a central area for your refuse, dig it down, cover it with a roof. Even if you're gonna be five Z levels down, just dig them all down and cover at least one of them, like cover that top one with the roof. You're inside your base, the enemy are unable to get through it, but you are completely safe. That's good to be aware of. Now I addressed that farms are different. So this farm plot is completely inside but above ground, whereas all the ones to the left are dark and subterranean. So even though these plants are right next to each other, this is a farm plot that a lot of new Dwarf, dwarf Fortress users might ex might experience. Pulp helmets, quarry bushes, sweet pods, and dimple cups. But as I said, as you go through the different seasons, there are differing choices you can do. And by winter, the only things you can do are dimple cups and plump helmets. It basically means the only food you're doing is plump helmets if you're doing them year round. But if you have one that is above ground, you can do whatever you can get your grubby dwarven hands on when you do collect plants, like strawberries, rope reeds, so on and so forth, including plants that are good for clothing. Dimple cups do not by themselves get you clothing. You need to be doing, uh, which one was it? I'm actually forgetting right now. I don't do them so often. Pigtails. You can't do pigtails year round, so you have an issue. You can do things like rope reeds, or is it, I might be wrong on rope reeds. I want to say it's rope reeds. I do it by muscle memory on stream, so I kind of forget what it is myself half the time. Um, you can do that year round and you'll be good if you have it as above ground. You don't need to go have this weird enclave where you have like a tunnel that leads to something that's three floors up, has a wall and crenellations and the enemy can't climb into it, but you're vulnerable to flying creatures. You can do everything essentially below ground and safe, but still have the benefits as if it was above ground. In my particular case, and again, you don't have to do this. I have the underground one, one of the smaller ones for food all the time, do plump helmets year round. This is not a high strategy thing here. You're gonna want variety, but this handles it okay. The one that is the food farm that is outside, I devote to some type of fruit, like sunberries, strawberry plants, middle East strawberry plants have a slight bug with them, blueberries, some type of fruit thing. That way I can regulate which one of the two I have by saying brew plants and brew fruit. You can keep them as two separate things. Actually, I don't even think strawberries count as fruits for what I'm talking about, like pineapples or something. You, 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 get, you get what I'm saying. And then I'll have a big farm that is normally above ground. I just didn't see the need to dig it up that I'll do for clothing because the clothing plants above ground will grow year round more often than not. And that's really it for something as simple as I've explained it. Understanding just how easy it is to make something count as above ground and how much being below ground actually punishes dwarves makes this really easy. If you do your entire base as above ground but constructed floors, then you're not gonna develop cave adaption really. So you don't have to worry about your military dwarves going outside and throwing up. You don't have to worry about your dwarves going outside and throwing up. You don't have to worry about having them take shifts guarding outside to reduce their cave adaption, which again, to get rid of accumulated cave adaption, you actually need to be fully outside. But being inside does mitigate this as long as you're above ground. That was farming and the same thing with miasma. If your main like areas, because let's say you have your meeting hall, or your tavern, you wanna have an engraved floor, you want an engraved wall, you want statues and high quality things. So you can't really dig that. But as long as you don't mind that nothing below it will be above ground, you can dig all the way through the roof and that will not affect the quality of the stuff in the tavern. So people can throw food on the ground and it not rot. You do the same thing for a massive refuse pile and then in the same square, build your, uh, your butcher, your tanner, craft dwarves, whatever it needs to interact with that and you won't have any rotting carcasses. You can be 20 Z levels down and it will not rot because it is above ground. Now, some of you are new, new to Dwarf Fortress, and even though I'm using a tile set here, uh, might not quite wrap your head around what I'm, what I'm talking about. I'm not gonna cover the concepts again, but just so that you can graphically see what I'm talking about, it's literally this. I just dug through the ground and then replaced it with stone tiles. One, because there was no wood on this map, because I just grabbed the first map that had a river, and two, to prove something. This is stone, solid stone tile. 
does not matter the material you use, the sunlight gets through. It's really it. The only time laying over something can kind of maybe cause an issue to stuff down below is with a bridge, which I'm not really discussing that in this video, but using a bridge as a roof can cause some issues sometimes. But you can use anything. You don't need glass. A lot of people sometimes think you need glass to make it transparent so light can get in. Using glass would have no difference from using stone. It is what it is. It's just how the game works. And as I said, you can... This is just generating an Armok because the sunlight is kind of south of directly above me. Ignore that shadow that's not really there. Technically, the lighting down below is... This? That's technically the lighting down below where this is the one beam of sunlight coming through. But the game treats it all as above ground and light because it has been touched by the god rays of the sky. And that, that's really kind of it. Uh, next video for next week, I will be discussing how to make the safest fishing kit ever using a river and you can never be invaded because of the way the physics work in this game. It is completely an indestructible fishing rig from outside. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully that my first video of this new series wasn't too rambly and I will have that trimmed up a bit for future videos as I get in the swing of it. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.